All right. So I'm gonna try and push myself today. I'm probably not gonna do any cleaning, even though I did clean the bathroom upstairs for a little bit. I just kind of like wipe the sinks down, and I do have to sweep the bathroom and the bedroom upstairs. Other than that, I don't want to do too much cleaning. I'm just going to focus on cooking. And I think that will help me when I'm doing freezer cookings is just to have a day focused on cooking. And the thing with cooking, while I'm talking, I can just start chopping up my bell pepper here into large chunks. While I'm cooking, I'm placing these meals in the fridge. And they're going to last. They're going to last for the week, for the month, however long. But when I'm cleaning... Um, Cleaning only lasts a day in our house. Like if I clean my house today, tomorrow it's a mess up again. So um, cleaning does not last, but the cooking and the freezer meals will. So spending a, a whole day to do this really opens up all of that extra time that I can spend cleaning on another time. Um, even though what I'm doing today is I'm doubling up a meal and then I'm placing one in the freezer. I'm also gonna do the bake city just, just to have on hand because making an instant pot meal is already so easy. So this is my really old chopping board, by the way, but it is a good, clean chopping board. So even though it's stained, um, another thing good to have is kind of like a little bowl to hold all your garbage. So I'm going to probably grab a bowl from in here. Or if you have like one of those little trash bags and stuff, like I'm just going to use this. I'm going to run the dishwasher tonight anyways. So yeah. And you can cut your onion up. I don't usually do it too small when I'm making my Chinese style chicken or probably any instant pot meal unless it's really calls for finely diced. But most of like my lemon pepper and stuff like that, I'm not going to do it too much. And I'm just doubling it up right now because again, it's going to be for two meals. My littlest is kind of like a vegetarian. She does not eat much meat at all. Like she does not like meat, which is a sad thing because we cook so much meat in this house. <laughs> but um, she doesn't like meat. Another thing with this apron, by the way, or any apron, you can just kind of like tuck a towel in your little string. I love that this wraps around the front so I can tuck a towel in the string and I could just wipe my hands. It just makes it easier. Or you can just wipe your hands on your apron, which is really uh, but she's a vegetarian and she's not really a vegetarian, but she just doesn't like meat that much. But this is the one of, this is her favorite meal for eating meat. Like this is like the only meal that she would really eat meat in. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because it's chicken breast. She's not a fan of anything chewy when it comes to meat. Like sometimes you get those chewy bits and meatballs and stuff like that. She doesn't like that. So, you know. So that seems good enough for these two meals. I'm gonna go ahead, I can finish that off. I was like on a roll. I could have finished that off on my big city as well. Also, I took out some beef. That beef that I, um, I'm just grating this by the way, if you have like a garlic smasher or, I do not buy minced garlic or like the garlic that you get in the store that's already grated or minced in a, in a jar. I've already washed my ginger. Just gonna grate it. So I did take out some beef, that I the same beef that I got from Costco a while ago, and I had two pieces, two little pieces left over. So that's gonna make one Instant Pot meal. I'm gonna make a Chinese style, like a, a soy sauce uh, beef, similar to this, but with beef instead of chicken. Um, I like to stay focused on one meal at a time, but if you want, what I would suggest as well is just to kind of have prep done. If you have all your recipes done, have everything prepped. Um, if I had more time, I would probably do that, but it's getting late and I wanna get lunch going. So it's, it's gonna go some of my ginger, rest of ginger, it's gonna go into my bag. Some of my garlic, rest of my garlic, it's gonna go into my bag. A little bit more there, a little bit more there. I'm just eyeballing this thing. This sweet chili sauce just makes this meal so good. And then I have my hoisin here. This is some, um, <clears throat> like I had a little bit of hoisin left in the bottle, bottom of this bottle. So what I did was just add some water and shake it around. I do that with ketchup, I do that with barbecue sauce and it just works. <laughs> I'm running a low on, look, oyster sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this. 
cover this up and give this a shake. Now, for my freezer meals, I'm not adding any liquid that I'm gonna need for, like for example, this is water, so I can add this right now to my lunch that I'm making today. I don't wanna add too much liquid to my freezer meal because it's just gonna make my bag much more bigger and bulkier and a chance of popping in my freezer or something, I don't want that. So you will need some liquid to pressure cook your food. So you're gonna need about a half a cup or so, so whatever, it, if it's beef stock, chicken stock, vegetable broth, water, whatever that may be. A little bit more hoisin, some hoisin in my bag here. Sweet chili sauce. Oh, I can use some water for that too. So this is my five spice powder mix here. I get this from my farmer's market. I'm sure most grocery stores probably sell this right now. Just need a little smidgen of five spice. Wipe my hands off here. Salt, pepper, salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna get my meat. Salt. Oh, I did not get my soy sauce yet. I, just, I have coconut aminos somewhere, I don't know where. It'll be nice and saucy. And look, I used half of that bottle. Absolutely crazy. I'll probably use the other half when I make my beef today. Here we have what was in my bowl. And what a great way to do this is um, these chicken pieces are actually still partially frozen, very cold, um, so it's perfect. I don't have to worry about anything. So I'm gonna just really mix this up in there. Really, really get it good. Chinese style. Wow, hello. Sharpie, are you losing IP? Like all I'm doing right now is literally scraping that white stuff off. Like this is not even writing. <laughs> what a bigger Sharpie. Either way, I would know what this is because I would see the ingredients. This is gonna be a meal. Look, there's a whole bunch of garlic in there and ginger and stuff. I don't want ginger in one spot, but at the end of the day, it's all gonna get cooked and mixed up anyway, so. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Sometimes I put, um, I am actually forgetting something. I forgot my brown sugar. Sometimes I put brown sugar, sometimes I put um, ketchup as well. So I am actually gonna add that. Let's get some ketchup. Wash my hands before I get sugar everywhere. And by the way, you don't have to add ketchup. You know, oops, I know it seems like a lot of ingredients, but it's kind of just like dumping it all in a bag anyways, or in your insulin pot. Another really important thing for me when making instant pot meals, freezer meals, is drying off my bags. Because I'm telling you the amount of times my bags have gotten stuck together. Here I am making my lemon pepper chicken. It is so easy. It is just a handful of ingredients. It is a juice of about two lemons or so depending on how much juice your lemon has one and a half to two lemons your chicken breast onions and garlic that i've already chopped up there and i'm gonna just slice those lemons in a few pieces and leave some in the bag add your salt and pepper you can add some italian seasoning and also some butter the reason i slice my um it's lemon into wedges is because I don't want it to be too bulky when it goes into the freezer so wipe it off and that is pretty much it that's it that's it for that meal so easy just a handful of ingredients and of course you'll add your chicken stock and stuff when you put it in the instant pot and here I am browning up my ground beef added in my onion and my garlic we're about to get working on our baked ziti I did not have ziti pasta so I'm gonna use rigatoni which is what I had as I'm making this here, I realized that I could have done the lasagna with the same meat sauce. In my head, I was trying to calculate, like, you know, but, oh, silly me, silly me. I mean, I still probably can, but I'll need to make the filling for the lasagna, which is, like, the egg and the cheese, and I don't have all of that grated or prepped already. So I'm just going to stick with the ziti right now, plus I'm limited on space in my freezer. I'm basically going to grate cheese for this, but it's not going to be so much cheese. It's just going to be, like, a little sprinkle for to pull into the meat and also to put into on top of it so it's not gonna be like a whole lot of cheese to grate as opposed to vanilla lasagna you know it's a little bit more what do you want to point out i got this from costco this was like it's 50 spring rolls guys which is a whole lot but these are actually so delicious and we're gonna be doing having this with the yakisoba noodles and the orange chicken that i already bought from costco it's already in the freezer um, but I bought this the other day and we tried it and it's delicious. So I'm going to have some today because it's a huge box and I just need space in my freezer. Um, so we're going to have some today. We tried it the other day. So with some with our Chinese and some Chia chicken. And um, this is some cheese that I had already grated in the fridge. And I'm still contemplating. I'm like, is this enough for me to do a lasagna with or should I 
I'm obviously going to use a little bit for the baked rigatoni <laughs> and then just leave the best back. But I like to have freshly grated, like I grate it myself. Or I'm actually, my, my girls grate it for me. Mozzarella cheese, whenever I'm making pizzas, it's just easy to pull out. And I could just have it, like, you know, for use whenever. All right, this may look like the smallest haul, but honestly, this haul, this, my grocery haul was probably around almost $300. I'm just going to show you just some stuff that I bought specifically for an easier week. Um, I did buy some microwavable plates that disposable that I, we could just toss um, for less dishes as well as some bowls. I don't think these are microwavable, but for cereal and stuff, just some bowls. My girls can take out their own cereal. Did also get some cereal. I did also get some frosted flakes. And um, we have obviously cereal in there. Also, I did pick up some of these Dave's bagels. These are the blueberry ones. Um, for them to toast a bagel really quickly and put some cream cheese on it for breakfast. So that's something easy for them. Lots of bananas that we have. Um, got some bananas as well, but that's always not always the case. I usually am the one having to eat the bananas or using it in smoothies. Got some apples for them to snack on if they want to. I did. I do have several of these in my pantry, um, but I know after surgery I probably would just want some light soup to sip on. So I got some of those uh, just to heat up in the skillet, a stove, a pot, you know, or a microwave, whatever, and just to have some soup on hand. I did also get some straws, um, disposable straws. I we typically use reusable straws, but again, the less dishes I have just for about a week, the better for me. Um, even though my, my, my girls do help with the dishes and they know how to overload the dishwasher, but when it comes to certain things, I just prefer to do them myself. So, as well as some reusable spoons and some, I mean, disposable spoons and disposable forks. Now, for spoons and forks, I actually reuse these. I don't just dispose them right away when I typically buy these, um, because they're really good for when we're going out or we're going on a, you know, in the car, long car rides and stuff. But in this case, we'll most likely be just disposing them of, of them. I did get this popcorn chicken. I did buy in my last grocery haul the same brand. They are organic chicken nuggets. So this will be a meal one day, the popcorn chicken and the chicken nuggets. If my husband wants to make up some fries, he can do that. Um, but this is, you know, it's, it's a lunch. It's quick. It's easy. Just heat it up in the microwave. And they've got something delicious. Tea. I usually use this every single night, my sleepy time tea, as well as I always mix it with my peppermint. But I did hear um, someone say that the peppermint tea actually helps with the gas that you have trapped in your body, so I did get that. Along with that, where's the medication? I did get some Gas X as well as some stool softeners, and to go with stool softeners, I also got some... Um, I know that's kind of gross, but it is what it is because apparently the anesthesia and the narcotics that you'll be taking gets you really, really constipated. So I've got some prune juice. We have prunes in our pantry, so I'll be drinking some prune juice and snacking on some prunes as much as I can. This is a laxative in case I need it. I think it was like maybe two something and I got it just in case because if I'm in bed or I'm not feeling well, the last thing I want to do is just have to go. I'm not going to be going to the grocery store if my husband's at work. I wouldn't be able to drive until one, I'm comfortable driving. The doctor said once you can slam on the brakes and you don't feel any pain and once you're off narcot narcotics, you can. Uh, gas relief as well. Got this just in, ca in case I needed it um, for the gas pains that they say usually build up on your stump, on your shoulder. I bought a bunch of foam cups because, again, less dishes. However, this came busted open here. And these are cups. You're putting your mouth directly on this. So this came busted. So I am going to contact Walmart about this because this is something my girls are going to be putting their mouth on and their drinks in. And I, I don't know what has happened to this. So I feel really disappointed because I am not going to go back to Walmart. And we really actually needed that. And I hate to just discard of that. My point, I was thinking maybe I can just wash them and then reuse them, but then that's so much water being wasted to wash all, and time. I don't know. Um, we can just, of course, use glasses that will go in the dishwasher and stuff like that, but I was just trying to make life easier for everybody just for at least a week or two because, you know, it's going to be hard for my husband already. He's going to have to be like full on hands on with my girls and the dog and um, with his job as well. So I'm just trying to make it easy for everyone. Um, yeah, I'm really, really disappointed in this with this here. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. This is just what I got mostly to help me for the next couple of weeks or so. This is mostly based on this surgery coming up. So 
I also have yakisoba noodles from Costco, orange chicken from Costco, and I showed you the spring rolls from Costco. We have the um, chicken nuggets to go with this as well. We've got hot dogs, we've got hot dog bread, and we have the Tyson chicken and burger breads. So that's about one week, one week, one week of wheels. One week of wheels. One week of wheels. <laughs> one week of meals, that's about. So I'm going to just put the rest of the stuff away and then oh, I have to finish cooking. I have to make that big city and I have to finish our freezer meals. All right, so I've added in some of my mozzarella cheese. I'm just going to mix this up. This is already cooled because I have gone out and I have ran errands. I've done all those different things. Um, so I'm just going to try and see how much I could fit in this. And we'll go from there and to top it with cheese and then just cover it up really good with foil. So I managed to fit this all into this 8x8 pan. It is literally right over the top. So I'm going to cover it with foil as best as I can. I'm going to keep this covered with foil when I bake it. But I know that I run the risk of this um, sticking, the cheese sticking to the top of the foil when I, when I put it in the oven to heat through. But... I'm going to cover it up with the mozzarella foil cheese that I already have, then cover it up with double foil, place it in the oven. So here I am, like, slicing up some onions again, doing a, maybe about one or two onions. This is going to be for my barbecued pork loins, as well as our beef, our Asian beef. Those are the next two things that I'm focusing on. Also, I decided because I did do a grocery haul and I did pick up some chicken breast, I will also be doing, like, um like something with the chicken breast so i figured like a lime uh chicken and lime for tacos we do have taco shells so it'd be really easy to pop in the instant pot and the only thing i'll really have to prepare is just lettuce and tomatoes on the day off and then if there's sauces and salsa and stuff that's just dip and go i'm also grating my garlic here of course this would be a lot easier if you're using that store-bought garlic but again i always like fresh and i always use fresh and I'm just dividing this now into my bags. I don't have one of those bag holders, so I'm using my bowl, and that works so well. I'm not dirtying any more dishes. Literally the entire time that I'm, this entire day that I made all of these meals, I just used a handful of dishes. I reused everything. I did not wash it, and I always save my meat for last. So this is my barbecue pork here. What I'm doing is I'm adding my barbecue sauce. I added in some onion and my garlic as well and my barbecue sauce i will add a little bit of cumin and i'm not gonna be i'm gonna be really honest with you i forgot to add salt and pepper to most of these things yeah i my brain i don't know where it went right that at that moment i don't know where it was but i forgot salt and pepper but it doesn't matter i can always add that we can always add our salt and pepper at the end so i am just working with everything i can and then using the meat towards the end so that way i don't have to dirty another you know thingy dish or anything like that so into my bag i added my um barbecue sauce my onions my garlic into my next bag i added my onions and garlic as well as some taco seasoning my homemade taco seasonings just a mixture the most important flavors you need in a taco seasoning is cumin oregano and um like you know i already have grated garlic and onion but you really need that cumin flavor and some chili powder so I diced up my chicken. This is going to be for the chicken and lime for the tacos. I'm doing a lot of chicken because I feel like chicken, when it when it cooks down, it just it just really breaks down into a lot less. I'm also slicing up my beef for my beef and my bell peppers with onions and ginger. If you want to see any full recipes on any of these, let me know and I'll be glad to share it. But I'm just quickly going through and honestly, you don't even need any rhyme or reason. You just need to know things that you like, flavors that you like, and just add them together and mix them up. So my chicken is with my onions, my garlic, my taco seasoning, and my lime juice, as well as the, um, the lime, the peel of the lime. Um, my pork loin is going with the barbecue sauce, onions and garlic, and a little bit of cumin. And my beef went in with bell peppers, onion, garlic, and ginger, as well as I'm going to be adding in some soy sauce and brown sugar. So just all those basic flavors. Once you know flavors that you like and meats and dishes that you like, you can just place these all together. I'm adding a little bit of cumin there to my pork and my soy sauce to my beef and, um, yeah, I'm just going to get all the air out, and that's three meals done right there. 
Okay, so our pork loins is done. This is the barbecue. Just mix that up. Mix this up with the chicken as best as I possibly can. Um, it doesn't really matter. When you are cooking this, you can just put a little bit of water or some of that stock that you're using to rinse the bag out to make sure you get all of that seasonings out. And even if you, while you're cooking, you could just throw a little bit of taco seasoning there for more flavor. And this is the beef that I cut up in small pieces. I'm really excited for this one because I made a stew yesterday. There's my garbage. Excuse that. I made a stew yesterday that had like, you know, the onions and I can, you can even put carrots in here. So completely forgot to do that, but hey, I might do it on that day. Um, might not, just might dump it in just as it is, but yeah. And it was really, really good. The smell of that bell pepper and the beef and everything was absolutely delicious. Let's place these in the freezer, make sure that they're nice and dry. These are pretty good and dry already. Um, this is in my freezer and I'm going to clean up. Here's my dishes. A bowl, a grater, a spoon, another bowl, a plate, and that. I made six meals today, seven meals today actually, and this is all the dishes that I have to do. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, that, that's not correct. I do have one pot and two pots to do. And a couple more stuff, but that was really mostly lunch. But in, in general, it really is not like a whole lot of dishes. If you really can just keep it organized a little bit so you have a, an idea of what you're doing and how you're doing it. So instead of going from um, vegetables to meat, vegetables to meat, and just always having to wash something, just do all the veggies, get all that done, then do the meat, get that done, and then clean up. And that's my, that would be my best way of doing it. And I'm pretty sure anyone else as well. I have six freezer meals. We also managed to cook lunch today, went to Walmart, go to Target. I actually did a pick up at Target, so it wasn't really like I went in the store. But I did run into Walmart, did run into Hobby Lobby. And yeah, I did not get to do the bathrooms, but that is okay. One day for cooking, a big, huge batch cooking, and then, you know, one day for cleaning. And these were only like six meals, but again, I really did not plan and organize 100%. If I was really, really planned and organized, I would have I would have been able to do like 10 or 12 meals much faster and much better. And even if you do have those little holders, bag holders, you can just go and add to each bag as you go. So it makes it a lot easier too. And I don't have that, but I may invest in it. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. That's that's for it. And for now, oh, tomorrow I'm making meatloaf. So I might just show you guys that tomorrow. So maybe you'll see me in like five minutes or five seconds. But yes, let me put these things away. All right, so I have, I'm going to go ahead today and get started on lunch which we're having today so that's my main goal is to get the lunch started and we're doubling up our lunch essentially today and i would like to get some waffles done as well for the freezer for breakfast but that is um either i'll do that today or tomorrow tomorrow's sunday so i am doubling up for a sunday like i typically do i am making dinner rolls i'm so i'm doubling up for dinner rolls because we're gonna have dinner rolls today and tomorrow of course, these in the rolls are best served fresh, but when you warm them up in the microwave, it's going to be good. In here, I have my milk, my sugar, my yeast, and whatever. I will, I will leave this link down below. This is like my only dinner roll recipe I will use. I have tried others over the years because, you know, you always see things pop up like different recipes and, you know, um, and I, I tried those as well. I always come back to this one because this is... This is this was my first like original recipe that I came up with my own when you know cooking and stuff like that. It was my first recipe, and it was the first one I shared on this channel too. And um, so I always go back to it. It's so simple and basic, and it is delicious. Like honestly, it is so good. So I also am making a macaroni pie here. I'm just adding my butter to my warm pasta noodles, almond noodles, and I'm just gonna make my sauce. You're gonna see me go back from me back to like back and forth meatloaf to macaroni pie because i have my oldest helping me grate some cheese for the macaroni pie i'm actually doubling this up as well and having one for the freezer it's going to be a great side dish to have um whenever we make the, whenever we could to serve this meatloaf because again i am doubling off my meatloaf so i have one for the freezer as well this is such a great way to make freezer meals is just to simply double up i'm actually doing a shepherd's pie today I'm not going to be able to show you that, but I am doing a shepherd's pie today, and that's also going to go in the freezer. So that's going to be another meal there. I also have 
Costco meatballs. I shared that in a haul a long time ago, but I do have those that are frozen and I can just pop that in with some marinara sauce and um, like cook up some spaghetti and we have a meal right there. So, you know, super simple. So I am making my meatloaf here by cutting up some onions, a lot of onions because I am making a lot of meatloaf and some bell peppers. It's really important when making meatloaf for me especially to have these things finely, finely, finely diced. The last thing I want and the last thing I know my children want is a big chunk of onion or bell pepper that they bite on. So I really like to dice it up as fine as I possibly can and I'm going to go ahead and grate in my garlic. In fairness, that's a lot of people may not like meatloaf and I think for children especially, I think that may be one of the reasons because my little ones love meatloaf and I just try and dice up those veggies really, really fine and keep it very simple but flavorful. So I'm grating in my garlic. I do have this recipe. This is my turkey meatloaf and I will leave that linked down below because it is the best meatloaf, I think, in my opinion. It's perfect it's just perfect in every way adding in my ketchup barbecue sauce mustard is also a really important ingredient salt and pepper not too much salt or pepper i know this because i've added too much salt and pepper well too much salt many times the amount of times i make meatloaf it's crazy my milk um, my parm you can add breadcrumbs i'm not adding any breadcrumbs and my eggs um i'm using four pounds of ground turkey for this so i'm adding in four eggs and I'm pretty sure at this point I'm going to go back to my macaroni pie because, yeah, there we go. Back to my macaroni pie. Added my grated cheese to my eggs and my milk. I also have a macaroni pie recipe. I think I have a couple. And I will see if I can leave those linked down below. Back to meatloaf. Here we go. There's just so much going on. I had my daughter empty out my bottom freezer. I mean, my bottom oven. So I was going to use that. There goes my four pounds of ground turkey. And I'm just going to get a glove on and mix this together as best as possible. I love to fold it onto itself by going from the bottom up to really make sure that I'm getting every single ingredient mixed in. And after I've mixed it in as best as I possibly can, taking a few minutes again to really make sure that everything is evenly distributed, I'm just going to divide this. Now, when I make it in my normal Pyrex, what I do is I you know, we'll turn it into a loaf, but with my eight by eight dishes here, eight by eight pan, I just went ahead and did the whole entire thing because it was a, it was a big, a good amount of meat. I wanted it to be nice and nice and even and good. Back to macaroni pie, guys. I tell you so much things going on. So I have my two meatloafs done, my two macaroni pies done. I am going to bake this now. And once it's fully, fully, fully cooled, I will double wrap it with foil and place it in the freezer. Just mark what it is on top so you know which is your macaroni pie and which is your meatloaf. And again, it's just, I would put barbecue sauce on my meatloaf. I actually have, you'll, I'll leave the recipe link down below for you. But that is it. It really did, was not so much effort and I have my freezer stocked with meals for surgery. And I hope this is some inspiration to you. I know that for me, sometimes like freezer meals and just taking the time to do that can just be overwhelming. My husband actually grilled up some chicken. We were making some kebabs again and he grilled up some chicken and I will let this completely cool, wrap, double wrapped it up in foil, place it in the freezer for an Alfredo. That's one part of that meal done and it's going to be delicious. Just has to make the Alfredo sauce and boil up the pasta, but I am so happy with what, with just every, I'm just so happy that I was able to get this done did not take long. It was not exhausting. I just worked efficiently and um, just did not have that much dishes to do at all. And these are, it's just, I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful. I hope it was some, some inspiration to you. I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.